This sode would not be possible without the support of our listeners, patrons, and sponsors. If you'd like to learn more about supporting the 3-Bit Gamer Show, check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash 3BG. And a huge thanks goes out to our boss-level patrons, Christopher and Patrick. Man, I don't know what the deal is, but I just cannot get into anime. Huh. Yeah, that's that's kind of weird, but I guess it makes sense. Say, does it feel warm to anyone else in here? Mm, no warmer than the heat from my heart, which burns with the undying fury of revenge! What is wrong with you guys? That's what I'm saying. I think there's something wrong with me. Like, my... Power levels are going up or something? Your power <laughs> levels? <laughs> your power levels may be rising, but I assure you, no matter how high your power level gets, it is no match for my signature move. Special fire beam cannon attack! Now that you mention it, I have been feeling an inexplicable urge to seek out combat to test my power levels. <laughs> JD, why is your hair yellow and glowing? And Lynn, where did you get that huge mecha arm cannon? Welcome to the Three Band Gamer Show! Oh, Sigoy! Welcome to the Three Band Gamer Show. I'm JD. This is Peterson. And this is Lynn. And it's the all anime sewed. Uh, uh, just yeah. for Peterson. By <laughs> request. This guy's the biggest weeb I know, fellas. Let's give him a hand. It's my favorite. Live from the Three Big Gamer Show. The news. All right. Our news segment is brought to us this week, as every week, by Crave Cookies. Crave Cookies is this awesome cookie, pretzel, churro, soda drive through in Midvale, Utah. Uh, they just have the best. Oh, they also have delivery and they have a new cookie of the week every week. And I just could not say it fast enough. You guys, they have a birthday cake cookie and mm-hmm. it is blowing my mind. <sighs> this is this week. Okay. So it's a signature vanilla dough base loaded with golden Oreos and sprinkles. And then they, st- <laughs> I'm sorry. They stuff a mini brookie in the center and finish it with a white chocolate drizzle. This is, I think, their first cookie that they have stuffed one of their other signature cookies inside of. This is like a turducken, <laughs> but with cookies. I don't think you could improve cookies, but they've done it. <laughs> and then they also have the Crave Cupcake, which is a fun fetty sugar cookie topped with cake batter, cream cheese frosting, and covered in sprinkles. There Trent, we go. what are you doing in there? He's legitimately the trying kitchen. to give me diabetes. He is trying to kill me. <laughs> it's like that scene from Nacho Libre where he's like, please stop. Everything that you've just said is my favorite thing to do all the time. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's how I want to die. <laughs> Trent's in the back, grinding up unicorn horns and just snorting them, just freebasing <laughs> unicorn. Uh, way to go, Trent. Guys, Hop on DoorDash or drive down to Midvale, Utah, and get yourself some Crave cookies. You can find them at cravecookies.com. All right. And now the news. Peterson, kick it off. Yeah, so this was a fun little story. Uh, my favorite, our, our favorite game, uh, Call of Duty Warzone. Uh, they're back. <laughs> they're back, with, the, of course, with another major update. But this time. Does this come uh, with bonuses? Oh yeah, they well they always come with little secret little Easter eggs like your game won't boot or like you can't party gig up Easter egg. <laughs> yeah 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 and you're selling it good for um, Lynn wants it so yeah. in this one they started they you know they're really working on the anti cheat but they started just banning a people's accounts for no apparent yeah. reason people are just logging That's in right. and it says your account's been banned. And they don't know why. And so they send out, uh, you know, people are replying on Twitter saying, hey, what's up? My account got banned. No idea why. And they just keep giving this canned response that's like, well, 
uh, I don't know, all bands are final, and a live investigation from our enforcement team can reverse that. Good luck. And, like, people are like, what are you talking about? Good luck. I didn't cheat. I didn't do anything. And there was loads of these. So, uh, War Activision, Call of Duty, at it again, just... They're just coming up with new ways to ruin their game that people like, including myself. They're trying real hard to ruin it. Banning accounts, snide remarks on Twitter. Listen, you can't have any cheaters in the game where there are no players. So essentially, Mm -hmm. I mean, they're on the right track. Maybe there are a couple casualties along the way, but, you know, those are sacrifices they're willing to make. Dude, you run the numbers and... You find that like a tenth of a percentage of your user base is toxic or hacking or needs to be banned. If you then ban 10% of your user base, you have a pretty high likelihood of at least catching some of those guys. And in reality, you only piss off 10% of people. I mean, a a a sweeping success. Exactly. (laughs) And you put the fear of God in the in the cheaters because now they know bans are random. And capricious, and they just come at any time, and they could be coming to you next. It's the, In the update. It's like new moderation. You're next. <laughs> I mean, we're banning if, people, and, and you're up. Well, so here's the thing: if they really are trying to be preemptive, and like I remember, I remember reading the article and seeing things like, oh, there could be other reasons why you were banned versus. But still, did we not learn anything from Minority Port Report? Like, we know how this is going to end. (laughs) Not well. No, guys, this is the same mentality that gave us our our COVID numbers will go down if we just don't test anybody. You're like, (laughs) I guess our cheating numbers will go down if we start banning everybody. Oh, you had to sneak that knife in between the ribs, didn't you? I just came here to talk about like a friendly, not political, because Lord knows I don't bring that into political here. I don't bring that into the 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 little ones out there. Listen, I I gotta say this this just plays into my theory that Call of Duty Warzone is a psychological or sociological experiment to see how far they can push <laughs> players and have them keep playing. Because when you were like, oh, I love it. You know, I, I, I hate this game. It's terrible, but I want to love it. I'm going to keep playing it. Dude, they're just seeing how far they can push you. First of all, they make the game 600 gigs <laughs> and uh, you they have For a special no apparent branded reason. Call of Duty. <laughs> and now they just are randomly banning people uh, to see like... Those people come back. Those are the control. You get that, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're just in there laughing. Uh, like, this is crazy. We can't get these they people can't to play. leave. <laughs> these kids are so stupid. Watch, watch this, dude. Okay, so we uh, we gave this kid what we said was a special update. Our game takes up 450 gigs on his computer. He, uh, we, we, we were watching on one of his Twitch streams. He de- deleted two of his his brother's games, including Destiny, <laughs> and they got in a huge fight. And then we banned his account. And then <laughs> after he wrote us three appeal emails, we still didn't reinstate it. And then we watched as his same IP address just made a new account. This game is fascinating, boys. Everybody taking notes? <laughs> <laughs> Turns out we can be a lot more abusive to our target demographic than we originally thought. Make a note of that, Frank. Yeah, I mean, it is Activision, so... (laughs) What did we expect? Uh, Okay, so next up, this is sad. Uh, This was an IGN... Is it an IGN documentary? There's been a... There's a documentary about the making of Half-Life 3. I think it's Jeff Knightley. Keoff Knightley? How do you fucking say his name? I don't know. Kira Knightley. Uh, Kira Knightley. (laughs) uh, Very cool video game personality uh put together this documentary about the making of half-life alex and in it in in the documentary there's a lot revealed about the inner workings of valve software of which we know precious little just kind of by design but (laughs) one of the things we learned that really jumped off the page was that valve has canceled at least five half-life 2 sequels Five? So everyone's like- sitting like, ha, huh, making these Half-Life 3 jokes and like joshing each other in chat rooms and making goofs and go jokes. That game was always under development at one point or another. 
there's how, some like how crazy. There's some like dude sitting at his desk even... and he hears those jokes and he's like, oh, this is my life. <laughs> I like well, how that I wasn't agree? even the main point of this article or this uh, yeah. documentary. No, it was not just at all. just kind of snuck in there and we're just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Way to bury the lead Pump here. The like, go back. Hold up. How many? Five? <laughs> how okay. Many just making think? sure. <laughs> that's, that's two and a half half-lives, guys. No, so, I'm sorry. That's you've two and a half canceled life, more Half Life games than you've made. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I did, I did some digging and re- reading into this, and apparently this stems from an old company policy. I think it's old now because they obviously shipped a game uh, during the 2010s that really ran rampant. Uh, was working on what you want to work on. That is, product owners. It is their prerogative to convince their coworkers to work on their product or project. Are you oh my kidding? gosh. Oh. Are you fucking kidding me? So so it it translating it to to Peterson's job at Boeing, this is if the lead director <laughs> of a project has to convince the engineers like, "Come on, dude, it's the coolest missile ever." It, it'll go so hard. Guys, I promise it's you so this fast. it's going to work this time. <laughs> and then, and then they start working on the missile, and then two of the engineers are like, Ugh, "I'm bored. I'm gonna go make a plane or something." Peace, <laughs> and they just <laughs> leave and Lord. suffer no consequence. That is Valve. Through, I guess this has always been how they worked, but up until like the 2010s, it like worked. But then they got in the 2010s and got a lot bigger, and there were too many exciting things and too many squirrels to chase, and they just, like, <laughs> they just, they just. Did whatever they wanted for 10 years and did nothing and just canceled five Half-Lives. What? <laughs> and a ton of other projects, too. They had a list, a litany of of canceled Valve titles because work on what you want. I love radical democracy. <laughs> I, I love it. I love flat power structures. But, guys, I don't think it works here. I just don't. <laughs> I appreciate the effort. I appreciate that you did it for 10 fucking years just to (laughs) double check that it didn't work. But at some point you had to be like, okay, guys. Okay. Jerry, you've worked on 15 different projects this month. He's like, I know that's what I want to do. (laughs) I want to do all of them. All 15. (laughs) Actually, now that you mentioned it, boss, I I have another idea. I I had a dream last night. It came to me. I thought it was great. I wrote it down in the journal. I'm gonna do that. Like I I said it before. Plants fighting zombies. Listen, boss. I know that you really want me to work on you know like this project that has like commercial appeal that we could potentially sell, but I'm just I'm really passionate about my elephant butt cleaning simulator. And I think that if you just give me some more time, I can really get the physics of like the droppings coming out of the elephant's butt to really sparkle and shine for you. Just and I personally know five other me. guys who are in. Who yes, I've got a team of six. Again is- we can do this. <laughs> <laughs> and the team of six were just some guys that he like got drinks with after work one night, and they got drunk yeah. and came up with this game. And he's like, "No, this is what we're working on." And then they do the the elephant poo butt simulator for six months before they're like what are we doing here guys yeah. let's do maybe, maybe like a giraffe like... instead why didn't we think of that it would be taller the poo scrap might it. work better scrap all of our start previous over. route let's start over <laughs> i'm down with this gabe's like hey so, this is uh, fine because we're, we're making so much money from steam it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah and gabe's just in his office just flicking through the bills that was another point that the article made is that like if you didn't have gabe newell's sign off on something uh your project was kind of just like eh, on the ropes until you could get his sign off or his approval or his backing and so it was basically a flat power structure across an entire big ass company <laughs> with like one de- major decision maker which again is okay but to think that Gabe Newell couldn't give the sign off on any of those Half Life games is jarring and confusing. Listen, but you can hey. get it done fast or you can get it done right. So just, you know, give them time. Just prepare to be severely let down by Half Life Life Three for just a bit longer. Just a couple more or, years. You'll you'll get your chance Lynn, to be let down. You can do neither of those and just do what you want and end up doing nothing at all. 
Ah, <laughs> now we're Which waxing philosophical here. Is another option. You can do it right. You can do it fast, or you can just do whatever the hell you want and not do anything at all. The Valve motto. Um, okay, so another piece of news, and I am the huge mea culpa on this one. This is, I, I, it slipped under my radar because it it would have been weird if it hadn't because it's so fitting that Mixer, the streaming service brought to you by Microsoft, just disappeared like a fart in the wind. Like, just you gone. never know it was there. It just, it was three weeks ago. This happened three weeks ago. And it, and I, I like kind of saw the news, but even in my own brain, I was like, huh? huh. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's like when a dead, like a, a dead tree falls over. You're like, oh, well, <laughs> yeah, I guess that makes sense. Dude, like, wasn't it, it like was six months that it's ago? That's the next we were logical like... step. Nothing too surprising. <laughs> was it like six months ago? We were like, Mixer's gunning for Twitch. They're gonna get them. They're gonna take out Twitch. <laughs> well, I was, I wasn't that sure, but I was kind of curious to see what would happen. And then nothing. I didn't see anything. That was the problem. Is like we heard the big news that they had paid uh, Ninja, Ninja upwards of fifty million dollars to stream exclusively on their platform. Honest to God, I have a video game podcast, and you and I read the news all the time, Peterson, and we consume a ton of video game media. Did you hear a single thing about Mixer after the Ninja acquisition? A single thing, anything, a whisper, a mention in an article. No, no. I hear more about Stadia. I had to (laughs) relook up what Mixer was because when you sent me this link, I was like, I don't know what the fuck that is. Is that music? What is that? Exactly. But you know what Twitch is. That's the thing is like they they, 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 they poured $50 million into Ninja and they're like, that's it. Done. Because they're like, he'll do the marketing for us. Guerrilla marketing. I'm like, no. No, he won't. Unfortunately, there are platforms that people are tied to. And even having as many followers as Ninja does, they cannot carry an entire streaming platform without Mm -hmm. any advertising or marketing whatsoever. Like, we are just now getting to the point where, like, just you know, entertainment in general can get away with charging us for multiple streaming services to watch TV. Like they have just now been able to establish that. And I'm still like butthurt about it. Like I'm still mad that I have to pay for a Disney plus prescription prescription <laughs> subscription. Prescription. That's kind of how it feels sometimes. I mean, it? sometimes <laughs> just give me that Simpsons content. You motherfuckers. Ugh. Just put it right into my veins. Cause it's into my veins. That chases away. Just just that Mandalorian. Into my veins. No, yeah. Watch it again. Like they can just barely have now started be able to do that with me. I don't know what Microsoft was thinking, thinking that they would be able to be like, oh, people will pay for both. <laughs> well, you don't have, yeah. I guess you don't have to even pay for it though. That's the thing to just watch, like it's free. Yeah, even just to like move, yeah. like just to change behaviors. Yeah. <laughs> But like that's a huge f and ask, and that's the thing is Disney Plus literally had to had to show up to the table and drop all of Star Wars, all of Disney, and all of Marvel to get people even to like look up from their phones, like, huh, what you got, huh? Okay. Oh, I guess and I'll even that still, then, then it wasn't like a hell yeah, it was a uh, fine, mm, like, fine, I'll get it, like I- fine. I- so this is weird, and I, my favorite takeaway is that there is a streamer out there named Ninja who one day got a call from Microsoft, and they said, hey, do you want $50 million to come play video games on a screen like you normally do, just in a different website? And he's like, sure, I like $50 million. That's, that sounds nice to money. me. It's enough to put Better a satellite no in space. Dollars. Well, of course, that's a good amount. And then four months later, whatever, the company calls you up. They're like, oh, hey, man. So uh, we're closing down. So like, do whatever you want, man. Uh, that, that 50 mil? That's all you, brother. And he's just like, oh, cool. And he just goes back to his uh, job. He had a six-month sabbatical, and they paid him $50 million to do it. Uh, there is a good distribution of wealth that's being distributed in a way that makes a lot of sense to me logically right now. I mean, and then he moved Except over to no. YouTube. He moved over to YouTube gaming and on his first stream had like a hundred thousand people watching. And I don't know, man. I mean, I guess he could be worth it, but my gosh, 50 Wait, million. Are you saying uh, is a hundred thousand a lot? Is that a lot? I think so. Yeah. I mean, is it watching worth 50 at once? million dollars? <laughs> I, 
I don't know. Look, man. You could that's, get a hundred thousand. That is tight. People. What if YouTube gaming goes under and he just like clears a cool quarter billion in a year off of failed <laughs> streaming platforms, just like some robber baron shoving cash in his little in his little bindle as he goes from streaming service to streaming service, and he's just like. This is accidental business model now. <laughs> this guy is... also ninja is like, like fourteen ver- years it's like, old. It's like reverse Fuck. reverse influencing. It's like, do you want something to die? It just won't die. Like get ninja and he'll kill it for you. Like he'll just be like, Put the all your Kevorkian. money at ninja. <laughs> it's the Kevorkian. Sink, sink this Kevorkian. business that you start to have regrets about. Um well, I think that I I think that's cool that Microsoft just I don't know just gave him enough wealth that his children's children's children won't have to pay for anything, and then they're like, eh, never mind, <laughs> fucking closing. It's Microsoft, <laughs> fifty mil, whatever. Microsoft. It's probably like, and that's the other like super upsetting thing. That is more money than conceivably I will ever have made in a single lifetime. Like or seen. <laughs> Or seen ever, yes, and <laughs> and they can just throw that around like, oh, cool, that's fine. That's I mean, tight. I'm eating ramen noodle uh... because, like, <laughs> get good at video games. Ninja... I had to buy a God. car part. That guy is making ramen. satellite money. <laughs> satellite <laughs> money. Christ. Literally put a satellite on top of a rocket and put it into space for fifty million dollars. <laughs> you could have your personal satellite anyway okay so peterson this is a huge one and we've been sitting on it so do it <laughs> okay. uh breaking news and literally when i saw this it said breaking news ps5 game boxes have now been revealed what dude guys this is huge what Just stop stop i have to go i have to look now i have to look now i have to look now, have to look now. 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 Everybody check it up. Click this link. I'm serious. PS5 game boxes have been revealed. Stop, 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 stop fucking talking. Stop fucking talking. I'm looking at them right now. Oh, my God. Brought to oh my you God. by cool, the right? same... Brought to you by the same marketing wizards that brought you the PS5 logo, which is exactly the same as PS4 logo, just with a 5 instead of a 4. It's the same box, except for there's a white <laughs> band across the top of it. It's not even color. It's just white. It's just a white band. Like, that seems so, like a more of a stocking design than anything. It's like so they can stock it on the right shelf. That's so, more of a concern for stock boys than consumers. Like the PS5 overall, the design of it has been like controversial to say the least, because we know just from the design of the box and the controllers themselves that they're willing to take design risks. We know this for a fact. They just put all of their eggs in one basket and then when it came to the boxes they were like oh no nah, i don't give a shit about that nah, 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 nah. can't do that pigment well, pigment i can't even be bothered with pigment just fucking put white just white delete it wait what's the big delete what's the... the big circle on the wait on the what so but the Never best mind. part about this story though is the lack of story that everybody reported on i mean everybody go to any new video game news outlet and they had this story like two days ago <laughs> Uh, saying, like, breaking news, we now have seen the PS5 game boxes. It's nothing. It's a non-story. And the news cycle right now is just so... uh, It's so thin that I could just see all of the writers, the video game writers at each company was like, boss, you gotta give me this scoop. You gotta give me this PS5 game box scoop. I... There was on one blood soaked video game journalist. Anything, anything to distract Any. me from what's going on. <laughs> one one blood soaked video game journalist crawled over a pile of his <laughs> defeated coworkers <laughs> for the privilege to write up this PR news blast about the PS5 box. He was Breaking like, Dude, I will slit your fucking throat, Jensen, if you get I... anywhere near the CMS. Listen, I had... give me the game box story. <laughs> I became a journalist to tell the truth, to tell the truth, and not be afraid. The people afraid the people of the people who try to silence me, to try and silence me from bringing the news to the people. <laughs> okay, so, have it on my de- have it on excellent. my desk by noon, and he's like, "Oh, I'm already done." It was one paragraph in a photo. Breaking news. 
So wait, the PlayStation Five comes with a charging station, or do you buy it separately? It's got to be separate. I just had this thought. I was like, why the hell do they not have a place on the con- on the console where you can just drop your controller and it'll charge it? It's plugged in already. Don't make me put two things on my TV when I can just have one. How is that not a thought that either design team had? Docked controller charging no, on the console it, itself. Which no, is so it, dope. they had given it thought, but then they thought, oh, we could put it I separate like and then charge more for it. <laughs> but Breaking I like money. news. PS5 game or ch- controller chargers liberated from co- actual console itself. Look, some people want the freedom to PS5 choose. PS5 innovates charging forever. <laughs> I And that is this and... that's that's the juicy scoop that I crawled this is over the my defeated that... colleagues <laughs> broken bodies for. Dang. Oh my gosh. I mean, worth it though, right? You're going to get that promotion to associate editor soon. Okay. Oh, boy. um, Oh, boy. Finally, this last article is a big one, guys. And not a fake big one. Uh, Video games are going to cost $70 now. They finally, finally, after 15, 20 years, decided that instead of trying to just squeeze blood from a stone which is what they've been doing with a $60 game that they add 16 add-ons and 20 different versions of microtransactions to. Uh, They're like, well, we'll just charge you $10 more. And I really hope it works. I really hope it eases the pressure that every AAA video game feels and the, the producer feels to monetize the game past its shelf life. I hope that $70 cuts it. So like... It's it's funny because um, normally when the price gets risen on anything, most people go, what? No! Even if it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and everything that I've seen about this so far has just been, huh, Celebration. about time. Yeah, just like, yeah. oh, good. Dude, that's, that's the it. thing is they put they <laughs> they themselves into a corner. I don't know why. And we've all been talking about like how asinine it is that they've kept – they've stayed at $60 steadily – because no one was brave enough to just come out and be like, this is a $70 game. Pay it or don't play it. But like they had to collectively do it. And in the meantime, every NBA from LA to New York got his grubby little mitts into the monetization of video games over the last 20 years, because that was the only way to make these profitable to the point that shareholders would be satisfied. So I don't know. It's a, I mean, it's a pretty significant, it's a 14% bump. Yeah, uh, I mean, you gotta make if you up think for about time. it this way, like the big games that this is an issue for where they're like really trying to squeeze every dime out of you through DLC, through loot boxes or whatever, um, you know, they sell millions of copies. Multiply that by ten dollars. I mean, a million games. They'll say sell a million games. Ten dollars more. That's ten million dollars more. OK, which is a big deal for for studios that take six years to make a game. Right? So, for example, yeah, Red Dead Redemption 2 sold... Uh, nope, that's... Hold on. I'm trying to find the sales numbers for, like, Red Dead. I can't believe... Okay, so... 26 million? So, say oh 26 gosh. million uh, is 1.5 billion dollars off that game at a $60 price tag. Now at a $70 price tag, that's 1.8 billion. That's there's there's 300, 300 million dollars you clear on that. So while it sounds kind of small, hopefully, and that's, I mean, that's Red Dead Redemption where you're like talking in orders of magnitude higher than most AAA titles. But I do think that that number will be satisfactory enough that when people look at the sales they won't be like okay well how can we further monetize that because that's not going to cut it sixty dollars for how much development time we put into this and how much it's cost that won't cut it um maybe at seventy dollars they'll be like oh cool yeah looks like the numbers come out looks like if we sell enough, it's working like it. D- b- by this the way my really, favorite thing about this is a really this story... kind view that you're having towards corporations right now they'll be like huh, that's enough money 
You know, Lynn, sometimes. <laughs> Do you know guys anyone who actually. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> just let me have my dreams. I God was going to say, it. like, that seems like a big, a nice chunk of money that could hopefully go down to the workers who are actually building the fucking video game that we enjoy. CEO's so getting a bonus. Let's see. Okay, Lynn, I'm not feeling that, that optimistic. Come on. <laughs> Now, the best thing about this I'm, story, I mean, I'm though, optimistic, is, but I'm not crazy. <laughs> do you know which game started this? Like, whole news story? No. NBA no. 2K21. Oh. I take it all back. I take Shit. it all back. <laughs> They're the ones who <laughs> started the it. Bastards. <laughs> they started the microtransactions like 20 years ago. Yeah. So uh, they're the ones that on were like. Right foot. Game's gonna be game's gonna be seventy dollars. Also, now, also, and also, everyone's like, yep. the, of all the sixty dollars games out there that <laughs> should be less than sixty dollars, yes, because they make a new one every year and it's just a reskin. This game should be ten dollars every year if you own the previous year's copy, and yet they've decided they're going to be ten dollars more. No, Listen, this should be a free update. And NBA, all NBA, whatever this game is called, is going to walk, so the rest of these seventy dollars games can run, can run. Oh, that's a good point. It's it's to the freedom atlas. to liberation. It's the atlas of video game prices holding holding up on <laughs> the shoulder on its on its extremely monetized shoulders. That <laughs> uh, you can have your shoulders can look just like this for five ninety nine a month, dude. Fourteen percent less gambling. Or it's it's two thousand e it's two thousand two k coins, you know it's about the same price though. Um, if you buy now, you get twenty five hundred ea coin two k coins. Okay, um, all right. Okie doke. Okay, kudos is our positivity segment because we all need this right now. Um, and Peterson and I were both talking about our kudos and we just have a huge laundry list of shows we've been streaming. And since that's all anyone does these days, we thought we'd take a minute and crank through, uh, what we've been streaming. Let's start with Hamilton. Cause we both watched it. Lynn, have you watched Hamilton yet? Uh, no. And I have a reason why, but I'll tell you later. Uh, <laughs> tell me okay. why you've watched Hamilton. <laughs> okay. Well, we watched it because it's the hit phenomenon of a generation lynn get out of here and it's our generation so, hmm. Les Mis. Hmm. so if you're unfamiliar with hamilton hamilton is a broadway phenom of the last couple years uh written by lynn manuel miranda who uh he wrote music on uh, moana uh he's been out there for a little while but this was like his his big big thing this is his breakout he, he stars as Alexander Hamilton in the play. Um, and uh, just a quick plug, he is one of my favorite Twitter follows that I people that I follow on Twitter because he's extremely positive, which is really great, which is what you Ooh, need on nice. Twitter because it is a cesspool of negativity. People are nice on Twitter. <laughs> Not that I've found. Yes. So Hamilton... <laughs> is amazing and i went into it not knowing anything and because i don't have a small child i've never actually listened to the soundtrack either apparently kids love it uh and i was like the first couple songs i was like yeah well, this is pretty good it's pretty okay uh it's a it is a stage production that they filmed so it's not like yeah. a, i was actually really hesitant because i thought it would be like the lay miz film version and i was like so out and jenna finally was like let's just watch it i was like okay we watched it and then like one second in, I was like, "Oh God, it's the stage production." I was so much Dope. more in. I'm. It's so much yep. better like that. Um, it, go ahead. It's so so. Yeah, it's the story of Alexander Hamilton. But it's so. Here's. I mean, I I honestly I loved it. I loved it so much. It is. Uh, the music is all rap, hip hop style, uh, except for a couple songs sung by the king himself, uh, King George. But it is it's cheeky, so it's really it's funny. There's a lot of humor in it. Uh, the music is catchy. The uh, lyrics are incredible. Uh, his his yeah. writing is fantastic. I mean, just as a quick example, what is it? The cabinet meetings is that what it is? The cabinet yeah, they're having sessions, those debates. The debate is rap battles, and it is yeah. so good. 
so fun. I, I mean, I watched it. Some people were like, well, it's three hours long. So they broke it up into chunks. I went start to finish and I was in the whole time. I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, as an added bonus, and we can talk about this more later, but the cast is uh, is all people of color, right? So it's Mostly. there's I wouldn't say it, all. Uh, there was there was the king of England was a white guy, but uh, Lin Manuel Miranda he's from Puerto Rico. Most of the cast was black, uh, and so and they're playing of course these like uh, <laughs> these. Uh, colonial founding era fathers. founding fathers right so george washington and uh alexander hamilton thomas jefferson and i don't know it just totally i i mean it wasn't a thing for me because it was so good i loved it it just works yeah. yeah it's good the music's incredible if nothing else just watching it for like the stage production value and the music alone but the story is really solid uh <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know. I've listened. I I've been humming the soundtrack for a week. I keep listening to it over and over again. It's catchy as shit. It's it's fun. It's uh spoiler alert, he dies at the end, so it's kind of a bummer. Um, what? I mean, if you didn't know, know Alexander didn't know Hamilton is dead. I couldn't he have died. Some history. Okay, spoiler alert. They literally he's been tell dead you for this though. Hundreds of years. They tell you in the first song. They like right. there's it's not like a secret who kills him. They tell you at the end of the first song. So Hamilton is on Disney Plus. Uh, and the next one that I watched was The Hustle, which is on Amazon Prime. This is a movie that I didn't even know existed. It came out last year in 2019. It's got Anne Hathaway and Rebel Wilson in it. And it is another thing I didn't know. Oh. A remake of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Uh, a movie which and- needs no remake. <laughs> Uh, well, classic. guess what, Lynn? Dirty Rotten Scoundrels was itself a remake of another movie. <gasps> Mind blown! Oh my god! Yeah, so uh, that it's a remake of the Marlon Brando bedtime story from 1964. So they just remake it, and so they remade it uh, with women lead <laughs> just leads every and, twenty dude, years. Is, <laughs> just remake. Yeah, the same every twenty movie. years you remake it and. I can't wait what they do the next one because this one. Okay, so it was like universally panned. Like people did uh, not not like it. And I don't know why because I was laughing through it. But I think it's a slapstick comedy uh, with Anne Hathaway. And I think just people, it just was jarring for them to see that. But I think they all did a good job. It's very stupid. It's very slapstick. <laughs> um, it's Rebel Wilson like leaning into just chewing scenery and just leaning into just being this dirtbag character. So the idea is rebel Wilson plays a uh, con artist, just like a low town low, just a, just a run of the mill con artist. She ends up going to Europe to con this town of rich guys. And she runs into on the train there, like a legit, like James Bond esque uh, uh, con artist, which is Anne Hathaway's character. Uh, you know, very debonair, very classy and sleek. And eventually Rebel Wilson wants Anne Hathaway to teach her how to be like a superior con artist and hilarity ensues. And I don't know. It's just good. Don't listen to the reviews. Listen to JD. The hustle (laughs) on Amazon Prime (laughs) is fucking good. Uh, Peterson, you what, what do you got? Okay, so uh, I started this show that's been on my queue for a while. Wasn't super excited about it, but of course I've blown through everything else. So I jumped on another Amazon Prime show uh, called Upload. If you are unfamiliar, this is uh, Greg Daniels, who uh, he was was the... He's been on The Office. He's produced... Yeah, he was a producer for The Office. Right, yeah. King of the Hill, Office. He's going to write so, Saturday Night Live. This is Park and Rec. Yeah, so he's he's around. He, uh, he this is his show. He he created this show called Upload. Um, there's no one in it that uh, you might recognize some people, but there's no one like ultra famous in it. Um, and it, the the quick synopsis is that when you die. Uh, right before you die, you have the option to upload your consciousness into a uh, virtual afterlife. 
and it's all run by companies. So the company that runs the one, this one is called Horizon. It's a play on Verizon. Um, and they, you know, so you're this, this, you're now in this digital afterlife. You can communicate to the out, outside world and people you knew and loved, but you're, you're dead now. And, uh, it's not a sci fi, it is a comedy drama, I would say. Uh, there's an underlying story throughout the whole thing, and it's kind of a mystery. Um, it, it, you know, lots of funny little jokes, and it's not, uh, it's not like uh, jokes that I think they're uni- they're jokes that would be universally loved. Um, it's very funny. I didn't think I would like it that much, and I watch. I binged the whole season in three days. Uh, I loved it. What's it's it an easy watch. It's on uh, Amazon Prime. So it's called Upload. Seriously, check it out. It's an easy watch make, and you will like it. It's going to make me upset that that doesn't exist in real life, except not by <clears throat> corporations, but just people in general who just want to make it nice. <laughs> well, that's the thing. <laughs> nice the corporations run it and uh, it's all like everything's an upcharge. Like, oh, you want to use the spa? <laughs> you have to, like, a thing will pop up in front of him, and he has to, like, swipe right to approve the charge. And then he's, <laughs> and then his family is... or whoever's sponsoring it, it, it gets charged to them in real life. Oh, amazing. So this is very Black Mirror esque. This sounds like right up. Yes. My alley. But, but it's funny. Ooh. It's like Black Mirror, but it's, it's but funny. funny. Yes. Beautiful. And it's a comedy. Beaut- so it really is worth watching. It's very good. And I would, I'll say the, like, you know, the forbidden love story that they have. It's very good. Uh, it's done well. I mean, again, it's very easy watch. It, it, I loved it. So watch Upload. Really watch it. Tight. And I, <laughs> we really hope you guys have an Amazon Prime subscription because this one's also on Amazon Prime. But uh, I finally watched Knives Out. Peterson, so I believe, good. gave this kudos like Woo! a year ago when it came out. Daniel Craig, Captain America, uh, just a huge. Did you see it, Lynn? Cast. Oh my god, I love oh, this. Oh, Jamie Lee Curtis so in it. Yeah, I, this was Shannon. When, oh, back so in the day when we could go outside into the world. I saw this one in theaters, and me oh, too. Beautiful, beautiful. Loved it. Yeah, loved I, so I should have seen this. Uh, this is uh, Who Done It? Murder mystery thriller, and for the first time in my life. At 32 years old, this is the funniest fucking thing that ever happened to me. I turned to Jenna, like, I was going, like, we, you know, got to the end credits or whatever, and I stood up to go grab a drink or something. And I was like, man, I, that movie, I was guessing the whole time. That movie had me guessing the whole time. And I finally <laughs> said that phrase. It kept me guessing the whole time. And I was like, oh, that's the literal, oh because I literally was not <laughs> saying that as a phrase, but saying I was guessing through the entire, I just kept like, oh, nope, there's the murder. Oh, that's oh the God. bad guy. Oh, they did this. They did that. Then they did this. And I literally just guessed the whole film. And guess what? I was fucking wrong. Yeah. Every, <laughs> every guess was wrong. It was so cool. So this is it's called it's called Knives Out. If you guys haven't seen it, like me, like you got to hit your you got to get into it. It's also like, it's it's Ryan Johnson, the guy who did he made one of my favorite movies of all time, Brick, uh, and he also did The Last Jedi, I believe. Uh, yeah. So, mm-hmm. which is less people are less happy when I say that. So I'll say the, he did the brother. That bastard. I'm Ooh, never watching this movie. Happier. I hate him. Uh, and then I'm like, uh, oh, he also did Looper, and people are like, oh. but then I'm like, oh. he did the he did the Fly episode of Breaking Bad, and people are like, ah, but also, uh. so anyway, so yeah, check out Knives no, Out. It's so dope. It's on Amazon. Spoiler alert for Knives Out. Fast forward 15 seconds for people who haven't seen what? it. What? The small no, don't spoil it. Just like, no, no, what? I'm, I'm, don't. I'm going to have to. No, you can't. Really? That movie really? just came really? out. I. It did not just come out. It came out a while ago. <laughs> a year ago. I know it feels like six years ago, 2019. Oh, but it was just last right. year. Peterson, maybe you have right. one I feel more. Like I've been alive I have for a ages. fast. I have a fast one. Uh, I finally watched the final season of the Clone Wars on Disney Plus. Uh, if you're not familiar, it's a Star Wars animated Star Wars show. It's been going for a long time. There's a lot of seasons. I, I tried to start from the beginning again, and I had seen enough of it, and I was like, I don't want to. It's like eight so, seasons, isn't it? Yeah, I think there's there's quite so a bit. Many. And so I 
I, and I had seen bits and pieces, so I knew the characters enough. So I just said, screw it. I'm just going to watch the last season. And actually, Aaron uh, recommended I do that. He's like, you know what? You don't have to watch it all. Just watch the last season. So I did. Uh, and I, I didn't feel lost at all. It was one of the best Star Wars stories that I've seen, it, including all the movies. Uh, it's, wow. Especially the last that four is, episodes. That is feedback I have consistently heard from people who are fans of the Star, Star Wars, the Clone Wars. They, every single one of them says this is the best, some of the best storytelling I've ever seen, just in general, ever. It really in is. In terms of all pop culture, the best storytelling. <laughs> That what they do is they wrap up the story of Ahsoka Tano, which is Anakin Skywalker's uh, Padawan. It takes place at the end of episode three. And if you're not familiar, that's where uh, Order 66, where they kill the Jedi. I can spoil this because this has been out for a long time. Um, and where Anakin uh, becomes Darth Vader. And so it's Ahsoka what? Tano's story. <laughs> Uh, oh wait! Shoot! If I'm, um, if I'm gonna make a lot of like people really mad this subtle. episode, that's the one that's gonna get me in the most trouble. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's uh, it, it takes place then, and they do a, a a phenomenal job at this story, kind of kind of tying it together. They kind of wrap up the Darth Maul storyline that they've had going throughout throughout this and throughout the comic books, and so uh, very good. Even if you if you are semi familiar with the Clone Wars, just skip to the last season, watch it. The first few episodes are like set up, and then the last four are like, whew, so good. So, so good. Um, Dude, that's dope. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to watch this one too. Do it. So, Lynn, are you, have you it. watched all the other seasons then? No, I've definitely tried. So, uh, I actually can like tag on a kudos too. I didn't think I had one, but I do have one. When you say that the Star Wars, the Clone Wars is some of the best writing that you've seen and storytelling you've seen, I say that about, about I say that about Avatar the Last Airbender, which just came out on Netflix and is available to stream. Again, mm. like it's like marketed more towards children. It's got like a really fun animation style. People will write it off because, you know, the first season's a little clunky and it is for children, but if you can just power through, oh, one of the best stories ever told, ever, hands down. Boof. But yeah, I'm definitely going to watch the final season of The Clone Wars because Absolutely I've, good. again, have only heard good things about this. Only good, heard good things. And as we mentioned, that's on Disney Plus as well. Hmm. Okay, that does it for kudos. Let's move on. Dear Game Devs, it's been nearly a fortnight since I last wrote... Mother is well, and much has changed back on the farm, but I have just one request of you. All right, Dear Game Devs is our segment where we crawl onto our hands and knees and beg game developers to do what we want. Um, generally, they listen if we're pathetic enough. It works really well, so oh, now get I your know grovel knees so ready. to have me on this episode. Lynn <laughs> can grovel. She really can, I am guys. supplicant before the game does. <laughs> Oh, man. She says shit like that, too. It's great. Her groveling <laughs> is so medieval. I love it. <laughs> um, I am truly a peasant serf coming to my feudal lord. Lynn has really leaned into the whole the whole surf thing. It's awesome. Uh, surf life. Okay, so for Dear Game Devs this week, uh, I don't know where this even came from. Peterson, did This was this your idea? It was your it idea from because somebody's I... I was I've been playing again Forza Horizon 4 cuz my my oldest son started playing which got me back into it so we just like take turns playing Forza Horizon and JD was like awesome. isn't that uh isn't that the one where you're you're driving around open world racing game uh and I said yeah yeah and you just drive around and do missions that you want to do join races that sort of thing and so you had this idea so in Forza, which is really awesome, is the way that Peterson described it, is that they have taken the menu for the game where you might select races or choose your next race or your car, and they have put that into, they've ch changed the menu into an open world map. So if you want to go to another race or you want to go do, you know, the ATV race up in the mountains, 
you have to drive to it. And on your way there, you might run into another driver, real or NPC, that wants to race. And they challenge you to a race. You do not have to do it. You can do it right there. You might set a speed record on that race and unlock other things. Wait. Hmm. Hmm. This is something that I did not know that I was missing from my life. But now that you have described it, my God. That sounds like so much fun. Are you kidding me? And I'll yeah, put it this so, way. I don't play racing games. I don't really like ra- racing yeah, games. Of course, same. Yeah, and, same. And same. this game was my favorite game. I think it was 2017. It I love it so much. It's it's just fun all the time. Because there's so many things oh. to do. You want to go do a Wait, race? A game you want to play fun? That's not frustrating. All the time. All the it's time. Just it's fun? crazy. Huh. It's Who plays crazy. games to have fun? <laughs> So we thought Dark Souls what fans we... are like, ugh, you noobs <laughs> play games for All fun. Like players, Sound survival like an game players, <laughs> fun is for morons. So, because as Lynn pointed out, this is a way more fun way to play games, or at least go through a menu. We thought, and because we can't do festivals now at all, ever, for the next (laughs) real level future, (laughs) we thought, let's take different game genres other than racing, because just like they did with with, um, Battle Royale games, apparently there's Battle Royale car games now and everything else in between. So Mm -hmm. we figured you could apply, these would be festival-like games. So, dear game devs, make these festival-likes. Or these forts, or they would they be horizon likes, Peterson? <laughs> yeah, horizon likes. <laughs> uh, I will lead off because I have one I'm super excited about. Do it, uh, Pokemon. I think a Pokemon oh, it would be festival perfect. game would be perfect. It would get perfect. It, oh. Everyone's it oh. would let everyone to allow them to have that MMO feel they've been asking for. This is essentially a Pokemon mm-hmm. MMO. This is how you make it. So you are running around, you go out into the wild to catch Pokemon. And when you're out there, you know, there's mostly NPCs, but every once in a while, there could be, you know, a couple random people you run into that you can then battle or not. Uh, you could queue, and then you go into towns and cities and that's where you battle. You have actual battles and you enter contests and you do these mini games and you have different types of battles, whether it's like, oh, well, I have a fire type team, so I'm going to travel to this town with a bunch of leaf type Pokemon so I can just wreck them. Uh, those types of things. I just think it would be so fun. And then you could play with your friends and, you know, go explore. And I just think that and it could one be thing, so fun. One thing like, that it's the... also, I think, oh. I was going to say, one thing the Horizon Fest, the Horizon game does well uh, is they uh, give you all sorts of, like, missions to do. You've got daily missions, weekly missions. A lot of games have those. But then there's extra challenges. And one one thing that keeps you coming back is they have a essentially a loot box type of situation. But you get so many of them all the time for everything. Oh. And I mean, if I sit down and play for an hour because they they do it as like a wheel spin, a wheel spins and you're like, oh, look what you won. It's a car or credits or outfit choices or whatever, all sorts of stuff. But if I sit down for an hour, I'll I will get at least a dozen wheel spins like they they hand them out like candy on Halloween. And so uh, if you had that in like a Pokemon game, you would have tons of challenges. Oh. Uh, win a battle against this type using these types of Pokemon. Uh, you know, you you they could come up with all sorts of clever challenges you could do. That would be oh man, that would be wonderful. This I would is love like that. The yeah, this is like the missing piece to Pokemon games. Like I bought Pokemon Shield, and it was the first Pokemon game I've bought probably since like I want to say like the original. Uh, Pokemon Yellow when that came out. Like, I was stoked when that came out. This is the missing piece to that because Pokemon Shield was like a ton of fun and I definitely played and I got my money's worth, but I got to a certain point where I was like, uh, eh, I'm kind of bored with the story. I don't have a ton of friends to like just battle for fun. Like, this is what Pokemon needs like, just enough guidance to, you know, get lots of little rewards, but still yeah. have it be fun. The swag that you could get just Pokemon wise in the game, oh, mm-hmm. just. The gameplay loop in Pokemon is no longer satisfying in 2020. Like, let's just say it. That's why I think, that's why I said recently that Monster Sanctuary is my favorite new Pokemon game because it's (laughs) Pokemon and it's Metroid. So it's two things and it, it, it lets me consume this same kind of combat style in a new funky way and it makes it continuously refreshing. 
But Pokemon, as it is now, you just get your team within the first, like, 15 levels, and then you mm-hmm. level them up to 60, and you win the game, and that's it. I think having this type of, uh, uh, like, it mixing it up and having a different gameplay loop would help a lot. So Even the uh, name Peter's makes some- more sense. Pokemon Festival. Boom. Done. Nintendo. That idea is free. Pokemon Festival would sound dope. That sounds yes, good. Like, that sounds like a right? game I would be like way interested in. Pokemon Snap, I'm like, oh, so it's like pictures of Pokemon. Pokemon Festival, I'm like, this is it. I'd be yes. like, is it a party? Is it a party game? Yes. Be like, Kinda. It sounds it like be. a party. It has party I'm doing games. it. It's more it than a party. Like a it's party. a festival. It's a festival. Yeah, dude. Festival games are just party games on crack. That's the difference. Dude, yeah, they're just way done. stepped up. Uh, Peterson, what do you got? So I, I went with another low hanging fruit. And this is Call of Duty. This is what's missing from Call of Duty. <laughs> because Call of Duty has every game. mode. You, they come out with a game every year. So they're just like, what's popular? I don't know. We'll do that game mode. You want to do a Battle Royale? Sure. King of the Hill? Sure. You could do all of this and more in an open world. You're running around. You see some stuff to shoot while you're running over there. Hey, start shooting stuff. <laughs> oh you see God. a grenade <laughs> challenge. You see a nade grenade challenge. Grenade challenge. Yeah. I'll stop. I'll do a grenade oh challenge. God. I don't know. Why not? Uh, what the fuck is a grenade <laughs> challenge? That sounds like a challenge I'm going to rise to. This isn't like, a festival. This is chaos. Right. Yeah. But you're that's describing what sounds like a that. civil war. Yes. Or like some other some other social conflict. Oh, there's a bunch of grenades going off over there. Over there, I mean, some people are trying to fight for the high ground over there. I mean, you hear, listen. You hear a woman screaming over her child over there, but also there's a grenade <laughs> oh, challenge. Oh my god! So listen, Forza is not that much different. There's just car <laughs> crashes left and right. You literally get points for destroying stuff in the open world. You drive around, smash through every wall and tree and bl- light post, everything you can find, and you're they're like Pass. racking up those points, Pass. baby. Past all those piles of rubble that may or may not have bodies trapped underneath them, there's a fun capture the flag Certainly game going do. on over there. Well, then you run oh, to an area and you're like, speed "Oh, challenge! We're gonna do a <laughs> capture the flag now." Oh, you want to do the battle royale? Run to the middle section, queue up for the battle royale. Like, yeah, it would just be, <laughs> and there'd be challenges all, and you could. They have vehicles in Call of Duty, so there could be vehicle challenges, and I don't know, just all sorts of crazy stuff, which. Call of Duty does. I mean, in Warzone alone, which is their free game mode, they've got like a new game mode every week, and it might not be anything revolutionary, but they do it. Just throw those into an open world where you can run around, play with your friends, find some guys to play with, join the game, I don't, and like earn a bunch of prizes in the game. I don't know. I just think it would work. I don't know if I want to see the spinning prizes. <laughs> For Call of Duty. <laughs> It'd be like gun Spinning. skins and cars <laughs> and gun unlocks. Oh, you got unlocks. the blood spatter. Blood okay, so as long as we're doing nice. something dark, I'm going to go darker. <laughs> Uh-oh. I want, oh, God. <laughs> I want Gears of War Festival. This is um, even worse. Oh. <laughs> this one makes sense. So in the Gears of War universe. <laughs> uh, the, you can't call it a festival then. You got blloodbath. Oh, no. The, Trust the me, Gears of War party. Reign of Terror. <laughs> The it's not a festival for the gears. It's a festival for the people, <laughs> the monsters trying to kill them. They are having a blast. Uh, oh my God. Gears of War, long story short, oh. there's a, it's not Earth. It takes place on another planet that's like hollow, essentially. And these like evil monster guys crawl out of the planet one day and just start destroying everyone. So humanity retreats to plateaus because they're the only thing like solid rock that they can't. Uh, come up through and so they're like these safe plateaus and that's where humanity has settled and so you are during gears fest uh you are you you can go between these plateaus where there's different challenges and different things you can do grenade challenges i'm sure uh and you have to fight between these plateaus so essentially this would be just a different years it would be an open world gears of war game is what what it would come out (laughs) come down to be which i think would be dope would so, be awesome gears of war fest buckle me in <laughs> uh how many I more do you have more Peterson? just one more okay cool uh do it the so the new tony hot game it's very it would be very similar to like forza it already is but a imagine, festival game i know but <laughs> if you're just riding around and like oh i'm gonna go join this event now and do this thing and i'll and i'll have this challenge over here because isn't tony hawk wait i mean 
is essentially this the, is this the new remake that you're talking about yeah yeah yeah. the one and two together yeah yeah i want that oh okay yeah, okay yes you're just yes. you're just yes. going around in the open world skating around doing tricks unlocking boards unlocking i don't know clothes for tony and uh <laughs> then you go in and you're like oh here's a half pipe i'm gonna go do this half pipe challenge or whatever or here's a track i'm gonna do this race challenge or a whole uh skate park and you can just do these different things uh oh there's a battle royale mode sweet <laughs> <laughs> and, and oh, when i say battle royale because there's a battle royale mode in forza and it's you find another you go around you find new cars to like upgrade and then if you see another car in the circle you just have to honk your horn near them, and then you've essentially challenged them to a race, and it'll give you a point on the map that you have to, like, first one, two wins, and if you don't get it, then you're out, right? And so, you know, first one, two, you know, 500,000 points in Tony Hawk, you know, you could do a Battle Royale mo- mode for anything. With with only skateboards as your vehicle, that's going to turn into like Grand Theft Auto real. Tony quick. versus like Tony. A bunch of Tony Hawks with like their <laughs> like skateboards bludgeoning <laughs> each other to death. Like, ah! 100%. Just running into each other just to knock each other off the board. <laughs> but that's the best part about skateboarding games. They have the, bo- the funniest physics. So that would be it's so already good. perfectly set up for that. Just ragdoll yep. physics mode. Um, <laughs> so I have two more, but they're kind of in the okay. same vein. Uh, the same universe. So, <laughs> Star Wars podcast po- po- pod racing festival podcast. <gasps> a Star Wars podcast <laughs> in an open what? world. What an original format. idea, guys! <laughs> a Star Wars pod racing sim. Just kidding. It's a fighter sim. Uh, it, it as a festival. So this is you are essentially running missions for the resistance. At it, think about it. It's just horizon fest in space horizon yeah. festival in space so you're flying around you you can just go oh i'll fly over to that planet there might be something some rebel uh dog fight i can get into or i can support a rebel raid on on a base on an empire base or something like that so i was like okay that's kind of cool but also on that same note i think basically a star wars smuggler festival game where you're playing <gasps> is essentially a Han Solo with a bunch of other Han Solos. So this is how you kind of get around the typical Star Wars game, which is you are the the titular hero and you are responsible for winning the war. And either you're a Jedi or some super important guy with a gun. And in this, you're just some low down smuggler, literally trying to stay out of trouble. And uh, you're just running, running missions when you get them, and other people might you might need their help to go run a mission. Basically, I'm describing Destiny with a Star Wars skin. And Destiny, I see no problems with, Star with this. Wars. No problems with this whatsoever. Yeah, this yeah, sounds fine to I me. Think it could be. I mean, if, yeah. Think of all of like the worlds that you would like to escape into just to live in for fun. Star Wars is definitely up there. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, you could definitely mix it up. You could do uh, missions where you're in your ship, you know, in your Millennium Falcon or whatever mm-hmm. your ship is. And then you could do a foot, you know, one where you're just trying to get it somewhere on foot, sneak around. You could do, uh, I don't know. And I mean, here's the thing. It's Star Wars. You could throw in all sorts of wacky characters. You could throw in. And, and here's the, the thing about Horizon is it does not, Forza does not take itself seriously. So, yeah, exactly. I mean, you could throw in a lightsaber duel like, hey, look, you found a lightsaber. Join us in the fake lightsaber arena. I mean, you could do a million different things in that universe. Think if of you did a festival. Oh, mode. You could like design your own pod racers, design your own Millennium Falcon, your own like little smuggler ship. Ugh. The more we're talking about it, the more this, this just starts to sound like Grand Theft Auto five online and what it has become, <laughs> which is just some like chaos driven anarchy which is so cool the blue ewoks it, like, are fighting the mm-hmm. red ewoks mm-hmm. and, then, and then the green ewoks come up and just beat the <laughs> shit out of both of them it's awesome no i think that that's that's kind of what we're asking for is like a we're asking for radical open world games because would you describe because there's open world racing games there's been them before and there have been them since uh i remember i played one called driver san francisco which was essentially an open world racing game set in San Francisco. 
But this, I would say, is radically open world because you can do everything at all points of the world. And Peterson, are there areas in Forza Horizon that are locked? Uh, at the beginning of the game, you have to like unlock them with a faster car or anything. Or so don't you have access to like the entire map. You, you have access to the entire map. There are like separate things they've added. Like if you want to buy the Lego DLC, then the whole world will be Lego, and you can drive around in a Lego car in the Lego world and break Lego stuff. Um, so there's yeah, dude, it does not take itself seriously, and it's all good. I'm telling you, it's all good. I unlocked the Warthog from Halo, and I can drive around in that. I don't know. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Dude, I you love it. the game at that point. <laughs> Are you winning, yeah, son? <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Does anyone have anyone else? It's, or do, are we good to go on to dice? Yeah, go let's on do to dice. dice. I, like you mentioned earlier, the only contribution I have to this is, oh, Stardew Valley would be fun, festivalized, but they did that. It's Animal Crossing. <laughs> 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 and it is fun and, and it it's is awesome fun. and we were right so yeah can confirm, all your games just just as enjoyable as as predicted 10 yeah, out the of key 10 to stars. all of these <laughs> is there's a party in the middle of the map a huge party going on so you're in, you're in the uh call of duty world and there is a massive party constantly with shooting guns in the air everyone just shoots <laughs> their guns in the air non-stop yeah. See, that even is my key. cat's getting in That's on the key. party talk. He's just <laughs> yowling so excitedly. <laughs> yeah, you he likes party. it. He, he likes it. <laughs> dice, dice, dice of destiny. Okay, dice of destiny is this fun game we play at the end of every every episode, in which we roll a twenty sided dice with twenty different game genres assigned to it. Uh, we roll a six sided dice to see how much we can spend on that game, and then we roll another dice to see who has to find a game for that price, pick it, play it, review it. Peterson last week rolled an anime game for the first time ever. Uh, we have an wow. anime game, uh, and he picked. Peterson, tell us, tell us, tell us. So, so I had to go twenty dollars or less, and Trent recommended Persona Four Golden, which was just released on Steam. <clears throat> now, several people, so many people, have recommended that I play Persona because they're oh, you'll love it, Peterson. Oh my gosh, you got to play Persona. You're gonna love it so much. I've heard this a dozen times over the last couple of years. So I said, this is it. This is my chance. Persona 4 Golden just came out. It's on sale for 20 bucks. I rolled anime. I'm doing it. I have to do it. So I bought Persona 4 Golden. Yay. I'm not going to give it a full review it. right now. But mm. uh, spoiler review, I am just over two hours in. I hate it so much. <laughs> but every Aww. Persona fan, just I'm triggering playing. a whole bunch of playing. people. <laughs> a, a, every Persona fan is like, well, you know, the intro is really long, but just wait till you get to the fighting part. And I just did my first battle. So that's where I'm at. I did my first battle. But so far, I uh, I hate everything about the game. Um, <laughs> maybe that'll change. <laughs> maybe once I get into the turn-based battles, I'll like it. But I, there's a long way to take me on this game. So I know I just <laughs> triggered all the Persona fans. Uh, you can definitely come at me. I'm okay with that. Um, but hey, maybe oh, they you're will. Right. Maybe it'll if change. If I know anything about Persona fans, they will come so, for blood. <laughs> so wait, is this your first like Persona game? First like anime yes. uh, game? Or I is mean, this, I, your, this isn't your first JRPG, right? No, it's not, and it. I, you know, I have played a couple other, like I played Doki Doki, right? Okay. Um, yeah, so I played yeah. a couple other uh, anime types of games, but this one so far takes the cake in terms of what the heck is happening. Why is the music so <laughs> weird? Uh, I, I don't. So here, just my quick synopsis: a guy. I know who was playing it at the same time was like, dude, what do you think? And I was like, ah, to be honest, don't like this at all. It's super weird. What the heck is going on with the music? <clears throat> and he's like, yeah, but don't you want to know who the murderer is? And my response was, <laughs> yes, There's I do want to know. Oh, no, I said, I don't care, but I hope he murders me next. 
<laughs> so that's oh how I feel about Persona at the moment. <laughs> so we'll see if that changes you're, next You're week. hoping for like a Doki Doki out okay. where the game just okay. ends after two hours and you're like, oh, and it like deletes itself oh. from your computer. You're like, ha ha, yeah. Persona 4 oh, was so- awesome. Oh, okay, great. So I just did looked it. it up. So th- this isn't the latest one that you've played. This isn't Persona 5. You're playing... No, no, no. The Persona 4 out, like... Golden. Yeah, so they just released gotcha. this one, this version of it on Steam, like, this month. Okay. Okay. Because that, I'm seeing now, came out in 2008. So are you thinking that yep. maybe it just didn't age well? Would no, you, no, no, no. Do you think you would it's like stupid. Persona 5 more? No, I don't. No? I don't. You're just, just not into it. Just not into Dude, it. My character... Looks like a 16-year-old gray-haired vampire. His p- collar's all popped. I don't, under- I, I don't hear anything hair. wrong with that so Yeah, far. nothing that you've said so far is problematic to me in my mind. It all sounded awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah if he was really great. a vampire, that would be great. But he's not. He's just some idiot. Oh, I, no, he just we'll looks just get into like this. a vampire. Who gets sucked oh. into the television. Spoiler alert. That's where I go. I get pulled into a TV. I don't know why. That doesn't make any Again, sense. It's not even interesting. Is. Again, I'm not hearing anything problematic here. I've seen 90s like kids movies that started this way. <laughs> yeah, and none okay, of them well, were good. We gotta, I, this is like, this okay. is like Jumanji. <laughs> we are going like to carve Japanese out Jumanji. like 15 minutes next week for your review. Because yeah. I just want the entire story. I just want all And I've taken a lot of notes and I so also, far. Also, I want you to understand the kudos that you have of, like, you have sunk how many hours into this game? More than two now, right? Mm-hmm. That's more time than I would give most things if I didn't like them at the first at the first try. So you are giving this a fair shot. I'm powering through. <laughs> yeah, I'm proud of Do you. Do it for us. Do it for us, I Peterson. will. All right, guys. That's it for this week. Uh, to hear Peterson's just incredible turn. It's going to be a 180 on Persona. You have to check us out next week. Uh, I know he's going to love it. He's going to come around. Just keep playing. Just keep playing. 12 out of 10. Just get he's past that intro. And they're just, everyone's just standing around, hands on their hips with all this anime bullshit. And they're like, I hope we solve this mystery. <laughs> and nothing happens. <laughs> uh... All right that does it for us this week to play us out we just for your pleasure Don't do it we have some music mm. from persona do it. five four I don't give a shit. let's just hit play on that enjoy that harmonica you're gonna hate it. It. <laughs> it, is, oh. hate it it's peach tea you're gonna hate it <laughs> that i think everyone that's ever heard any music from an anime video game has thought yeah it's good more <laughs> harmonica. <laughs> this song would be perfect, but just damn, there's something missing. What could it Nothing be? I think I got a pres- I got a fever. <laughs> and the only prescription <laughs> is more harmonica. Harmonica. More harmonica. <laughs> Give me that mouth flute. I need to hear it. <laughs> oh, All right, guys, that's it for us. I'm JD logging off. This is Peterson going AFK. Lynn going to deliver some breaking news about a game box. Oh my god, I have to go. I have to go. I have to go now. I have to go now. Normally, this is where I fade the music out, but I'm suffering through the first two hours of this game, so I'm going to make you suffer through this song a little longer. The Shadow World. <laughs> so stupid I hate it man I wish there was more harmonic oh there it is never mind Peterson Productions oh yeah psych